Western companies trying to get them into the Chinese, the greater Chinese markets. So they're very, very weak at developing long-term relationships. That's basically due to social, a lack of the social contact, 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 and inexperience in dealing with Asian cross cultures. Let me ask you a question. Who here has been to China? And that's, this is great, fantastic. I wish we could all go to China every, every year because China changes so rapidly, doesn't it? You're there one year and the next year you have three new buildings. Oh my goodness, where'd they come from? Basically, Western companies are not strong at promoting image to the local market and there's no Asian corporate identity. What do I mean by Asian corporate identity? Well, basically, I've, I've had many Americans tell me, well, I don't need to have my logo translated to Chinese. <coughs> Microsoft is Microsoft. The Chinese know it. I don't have to have it translated to Chinese. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Because when you go into China as a small company, you need a dual branding strategy. Your English and your Chinese logo. Eventually, the Chinese logo will win out as the public gets to know the product and then the Chinese, they would prefer. It's almost like saying, well, well, the key point is, even though Chinese people can speak English and speak it very, very well in China and Hong Kong and Taiwan, when they read the newspaper, they're still reading the Chinese news newspaper. So they may be able to speak, speak English fluently, perfectly. They still prefer to see the Chinese, though. So don't, don't mix that up. That's a very, very important concept. So if you're a company, if you're going into China, you have to completely brand yourself. Brand yourself with your image, with your logo, with your trademark, with your website. All of these things are very, very critical. So if you have no local language product literature in Chinese, Korean, Japanese, essentially the Asian, the Northeast Asian languages, well, how do you expect people who are in China who may not be English majors to fully get through your technology and understand? Even though the amount of English spoken in China increases so rapidly every single year, it's, it's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. There's a, a, a lack of stable, reputable local representation. Many Western companies, they go into China, they talk to one representative, they say, well, this is great, I've, I've got a rep, everything's fine, I, I can go back home, I don't have to worry about my China business anymore, everything's fine. <coughs> um, if we have that mentality that you go into China, you're signing up, up a rep, and business is going to start flowing. No, it's not. You have to help that rep. You have to motivate that rep. If you do not motivate that rep, how do you expect him? There's no skin in the game for him. How do you expect him to sell your product? So it's very, very critical that you're dealing with somebody who's reputable, because if he's not reputable, it can be actually very disastrous for your company's image in China. If he is taking your technology, taking your nice technology and sending it to factory number 27 in Shanghai, who's going to start to reproduce these products, and you don't even know what's going on because you're back in the West, and he's telling you, hey, everything's fine, yeah, yeah. It is very critical to have uh, reputable people that you're dealing with in China. There's also another concept of, not, of no product feature localization strategies. Of course, the Chinese manufacturer, they want you to localize certain content, certain portions of your content. Of course, if you're manufacturing a product, that's easy. There's always a lot of content that can be taken uh, in Greater China, especially mobile devices and uh, all kinds of electronics equipment. Most of it comes from Asia now. And a lot of it is now being produced in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, part of Greater China. Price fixing, prices are fixed in US standard. Why do that with China? I mean, Microsoft understands that, but I'm not sure if they're willing to uh, lower the prices. They understand that they need to lower the prices. I'm not sure if they're willing to do that, though. So hence, they have <coughs> tremendous IP infringement, 95% infringement of their technology, of their windows, of their, of their entire technology. Now, this is a roadmap for action. So Carl, what's the roadmap? Tell me where to go, Carl. I need the map. This is what I think you should start at doing if you want to do business with the Chinese. Locate Asian, spe Asian specialists to manage your Asian Pacific and Greater China channel markets. You have to build channels. You must build the channels.
create a China market uh, assessment. Don't go into China 